<laughs> Hello, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Greetings to you all in the mighty name of our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, this is a Pastor Kumar from India. I'm so glad to meet you all along with my brother, Sian Leville from the United Sean States Lavelle. of America. <laughs> Pronounced Sean Lavelle. Yep, okay. Uh, he is very well known friend of mine since 2007. Uh, hope, hope 2007 or six? Uh, 2007. We have met in China. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, praise God. So then it is uh, uh, from 2007 is a very, very good friend of mine. Uh, so today we invited him to speak uh, in this Zoom meeting and uh, I love him very much. He loves me very much and uh, we are uh, so glad to meet you all through this Zoom meeting. And uh, Joanne Crosby, thanks so much for joining with us uh, in this Zoom meeting. And uh, yes, brother, this is uh, uh, your time now to speak on. <laughs> so we we are bringing you in our Facebook live as well and uh, through this meeting Zoom meeting and we will record it uh, upload it in YouTube and we'll post it very later. So this is your time, my friend. Please come on. What the Lord has laid upon your heart to share with our friends, people, and uh, to this universal church. Um, uh, you can speak on. Yeah, please. Well, good. Good evening, everyone. As you know, my name is Sean. Um, it's Brother Kumar. We've known each other for uh, over 10 years now. Thanks to oh. or thanks to him. Maybe just a quick testimony that might lead up to what I was preaching. He. Um, I had actually gone to China and I was trying to get the gifts of speaking in tongues and he prayed for me and he told me, Kumar told me, he goes, when you start speaking in tongues to let him know so that he may glorify God. He didn't say if, he said when. A lot of times that inspired me. I did start speaking tongues later. I was actually prayed for a man named Brother Yoon who, if you ever read the book, The Heavenly Man, He's a man who suffered a lot under the communist China. So it was odd coming from China and then a powerful man from China praying for me and then started speaking tongues. And so a lot of the promises of the Bible, they're yes and amen and in Christ. But sadly, we oftentimes take them where it says, where God says, um, when we take it as an if, or if you choose to, or when it says all, like Jesus said, go into all the world. He meant all of it. Some would say, well, there's certain areas we'll never go to because they persecute Christians or something else like that. So key words. Think about it this way. When God says, if you do something, that means an if. If he says yes, he means yes. If God says no, he means no. So all the promises are yes, and amen, and in Christ. So Anyway, I guess what I was on my heart was talking about the love of God. Now, there's a big shift we have, like people talk about love of God and we love you, I love you, and oftentimes just this word that has become, sadly, in, in the English language, it's me, people mean it so many things, yet who really demonstrates it? How do we know what God, what love really looks like? It's like the Greek, the Hebrew. They have several forms of it, while we have only one word. Like you got in Hebrew, you got agape. It says phileo and eros. Agape, that's the love Jesus talked about. He says that's a selfless, benevolent love. There's no greater love than this, than he who would lay down his life for his friends. Where's that? No. 
Victor. That is John 15, 13. So if you guys want to jump over to your Bible, what does it say? There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for his friends. Greater love has known than this, than someone to lay down his life for his friends. Several different translations. That's actually one of the themes I think of the, um, um, oftentimes quoted in the U.S. military, because when people are willing to put their life on the line to serve in a very tough situation where it's not comfortable, they'll go very far to protect, they'll serve for a cause bigger than themselves. To uh, Even though it's not comfortable, it's like warfare. I watched the movie 1917 last night, which was about the... Um, um, it was about World War II, and a British, two British soldiers were given a mission to run a letter to uh, two battalions who were marching into a trap. And so they had great urgency. They had to cross lines, go behind enemy lines, and great dangers to do that. And it was very tough. They had no sleep. One of them died or uh one of them died along the way. And so even with all that great emotional rest, everything going on, the guy completed the mission. Why? Because he saw what the cost was for was greater than himself. Who demonstrated that the best? That was Jesus. No greater love than this than he who laid down his life for us. But yet it says that Christ died for us while we were still sinners, when we had no strength. Amen. Just hold on. I died yet while we were just taking a minute just to bring up that scripture. Okay. Romans 5 8. What does it say? But God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But God gives proof of his love to us in Christ Jesus, dying for us while we were still sinners. Various translations. How did Jesus demonstrate it? Demonstrated by willing to die. Willing to die. So, it's an amazing thing. I was, yeah, I guess it's, um, even, don't take anyone, take this the wrong way, but this is a lot of what compelled some of the crusaders to be willing to go to a foreign land to protect their, um, fellow brethren when they found out they were being heavily oppressed. Now, I'm not here to, they were Catholics trying to protect Eastern Orthodox. So they didn't know about the Bible and other stuff, but there was a lot of, in the First Crusade, they had a lot of um, very great success, even when they were outnumbered. And one of the things they backed up was on that verse. So without getting too far into that topic, God loves everyone. He's not telling us to try to get people converted with the sword. I'm not trying to preach that at all. So going back to the important thing right now is, um, yeah, the love of God. So Jesus demonstrated that with his life. So what I want to talk about on that love aspect is that how do we love? What's the secret to that? What's that ability that it says that how do we love like that? Because we hear it all the time. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's written Matthew twenty-two thirty-eight. That's powerful. <laughs> yeah. Let's go there. It's very good. What does it say? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Wow. <laughs> 22, 38, 40. What does it say? Are you reading no, it from? I am re uh, re reiterating your word. Love, love your neighbor as you love your son. <laughs> yep. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, that you love your neighbor as, as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Now, this is a big key difference between Old Testament and New Testament. The Old Testament, you were commanded to love. But guess what? said that that's what the whole Ten Commandments, there's about 613, I think, from the Old Testament was hinged on that. So in order to do that law, God commanded people to do it, yet 
that said, who was able to keep all the law? It, it turned out us humanity, we were short to keep the law, the Ten Commandments, the other stuff. So who came on the scene who was able to do that? Jesus. And then he demonstrated with his life. He loved with a pure love. And what did Jesus say? He actually gave a new commandment, just a little tweak, a few little things that added to this commandment that still makes it important, but gives it one thing that allows us to be able to love with the same kind of love that Christ had. Let's go to John 13, verse 34 through 35. All right, you got your Bibles with you? Yep. Uh, 13. Using a computer, so. All right, what did Jesus say? Here he's talking to the disciples, and this is before he dies on the cross, and he gives his long spiel of a lot of important stuff that they didn't quite get for a long time. A new commandment I give you. Okay, it's a new one. Let's see the little characters he's reading right here. Love one another. We go, wait, 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 wait. We've heard that before. Love God, love your neighbors yourself. We've heard that before. Uh Uh-uh. See, I feel a little different. Here they are. As I. Who's he talking about? It's Jesus. Who's talking? Jesus. One important thing about reading the Bible, don't just read through it and say, oh, I've read this before. Read it slowly. Sometimes that's when the Holy Spirit's able to, you're able to let your mind listen to the Spirit of God so that it can come alive to you. Hmm. As I have loved you. Yeah. Just five little different words makes the whole thing change. Yeah. Love one another as I have loved you. That means he was telling disciples to know what love was, to be able to do it, is to know his love. Mm -hmm. See? So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. Man, there's a lot to unpack even in those words. So this is where the change is. Now, instead of you trying to love people out this way, oh, I got to give everything towards God with everything and send it out this way. You can't do that. That's what you ran into in Romans 7. Paul, where Paul talks about the things I want to do, I can't do. The things I don't want to do, I end up doing because we don't have in ourselves to go send that absolute pure love of selfishness to God and then be able to send out to our neighbors caring for ourselves. Do you know why? What happened when we, when man fell in the garden? We took on the nature of the devil. And what was the devil about? Serving himself. Okay. Somebody's got their microphone or something. Yeah, somebody is. Uh, Brother Mac, uh, yeah, please welcome. We welcome you into our Zoom meeting. And uh, yeah, thanks for unmute your microphone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Please yeah, carry on. We can move Thank you for muting the microphones. It's ca- ca- causing a lot of feedback. Anyway, <laughs> um, so saying that, we, when we took, when Adam took, ate the tree, we died spiritually. We've heard, most of you heard this before. We took on the nature of the devil, which is self-serving. What is it saying, Corinthians? Love seeks not its own, is not self-centered. That's what we were born into Adam. We were born with that fallen nature. We were born with the incapability of love. Tying to Romans 7 about things I want to do, I can't do, things I don't want to do, I end up doing. Because that's what we had. So what we got to do we're going to love with that pure kind of love is guess what? We're invited by Jesus to get to know his love. And from that, we're able to love. Remember that parable? See right now, let's actually go to it. Um, Okay. 
Okay. Luke 7, verse 4, 47. Okay. So you got the story right here. I'm just going to go through it kind of quick. Where... Okay. You go through the story and you got this you got this woman who comes you got jesus if you read through the scriptures um woman comes into jesus gets invited to a pharisee's house that's a pretty nice thing to do someone invites you over to the house so anyway he's over there and then he's sitting down and then this woman shows up out of nowhere and does some stuff that think about it just put yourself in the situation just imagine someone comes up you invite someone to the house some other person comes into the house and this person comes behind Jesus, starts crying, uh, pours out anointing oil on their feet, and starts wiping their feet with their hair. Can you imagine that happening to you? We Oftentimes we read some of these Bible stories and we're just like, yeah, yeah, it's the story of Jesus we've heard a hundred times. Mm -hmm. That would be weird to a lot of people. How many of us would want someone just to come up, pour oil on us and start on our feet and start crying? That seems weird. We got to sometimes look at this story and really think about it going, whoa, what's going on? Like Jesus walking on the water. That would be shocking to a lot of people. There's a reason why the disciples freaked out. They thought he was a ghost. So we can't just treat these stuff as Bible stories that we've told the kids over years. And then when we read them as adults, it's like, yeah, it's cool, great. And then have no belief that they can operate in our lives too. So anyway, as I saying, be able to slow down, read these things, think about them so that Holy Ghost, while being in communion with them, he can bring it alive to you. It's just like Jesus is when you read the Bible. Let it be like as if Jesus was sitting there telling the story to you directly. So anyway, reading the story. And so the woman cr cries, wipes his feet, and then you got the guy who's thinking in his head, he's going, wow, if this man was a prophet, he'd know this one was a sinner. So what does Jesus ask Simon? He goes, Simon, I got a question for you. He's like, sure. Yeah. He goes, just imagine there's a master. He's got one who has, one person owes him like a 10,000 denarii, another one only owes him 100. And he goes, and they both get forgiven. Who do you think is going to love him more? He goes, well, I suppose the one who's been forgiven much. And he's like, you have judged correctly. Now he goes, now you see, this woman, I came into your place. You did not give me a kiss. This woman has not ceased to kissing my feet. When I came in, you didn't anoint my head with oil. And she has anointed my head with oil. Um, you did not give me a bowl to wash my feet. But this woman with her own tears has washed my feet. He goes with her is anointing my feet with perfume. And he goes, Look, therefore I tell you, verse 47, because her many sins have been forgiven, she has loved much. But he who has been forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Why? Did it? You can see some people when they talk about Jesus, not always, but sometimes they get very emotional. They get. It's like they're talking about the love of the life. They're, they're, they don't have to be a big pastor, so no, but you can almost see it sometimes when people have been with Jesus. Now here is a woman who loved much because she has received the love of God. Love one another as I have loved you. Here's someone, might have been, some people expect, I think it may have been Mary, yeah, Mary Magdalene, same person, I think, different gospels talk about it that she's mentioned as the woman who did it so um point being remember jesus was sitting at his feet when everything else when martha was busy about a lot of stuff she was there being with jesus receiving that love and that's what when you do that that enables you to love let's go to um we're going to jump to John chapter 4, verse 19. First John 4, verse 19. Four. 
Okay. Let's see. Okay. There is, start with verse 14. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. The one who fears has not been perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Amen. This is very key. I think First John 4, 10, same thing. And love consists in this, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. In order for me to truly love this way towards people, I have to have this connection to God. Mm -hmm. that's having that time where you're in prayer, being with God, whatever, everyone has a little different style. You can be in the morning, just being like, get up and say like, you know what, Father God, thank you. I'm receiving your love. Thank you, Lord, that I'm alive to live for you, Lord. Some people are huge into all this confession stuff about like, I'm the child of God. I'm anointed. I'm a power of God that wherever I tread my foot is my territory. That's fine. But remember, you're not just doing all this quotings to get promises fulfilled, Rolls Royces, other stuff. I like doing confession to God. So it's like, Father God, thank you. You have loved me with an everlasting love. Thank you, Lord, that you see me as a dear son, that you have accepted me as a prodigal son, that when you died for me for my sins, that you accept that you overlooked them all and have thrown them into the sea. I thank you, Lord, that as you have loved me, you have recreated me in love to love others. That's acting in faith. That's saying, you know what, I'm agreeing with what you say. So I strongly encourage that when you get that moment, when you're praying with God, other stuff in the morning. So when you're having that time with him praying, reading the Bible, you go on to like Galatians where it says, or wherever you pick up, and it says, yep, as you read through read it when it talks about a promise you can take a moment to be like father god thank you that this promise that you love me i love you and when it says something like when you're reading where it says no greater love than this suit than he who laid down his life for his friends reading a verse like that you can go father god thank you that you laid down your life for me so as i i notice this verse and it stands out to me so thank you, Father God, that as you've laid down your life for me, it is an honor to get to lay down my life for others, even in small ways. So you can read and talk to God while reading the Bible and have interactions with him so that it's becoming alive, becoming a joy, becoming just uh, an excitement. It's just so good. So, man, let's go to... Galatians 220. Okay. <laughs> Two. Does it say right here? Yep. I have been crucified with Christ, and no longer I live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live, I live in the body. I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. In order to love, what did Jesus say? If anyone wants to deny, follow me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and come after me. He who tries to hold on to his life shall lose it, but he who loses his life for my sake shall find it. <laughs> That's what you get baptized for. You get to, oftentimes, the New Testament, 
a lot of people, we talk about baptism, especially here in America. We're like, oh, one day you get baptized when you really want to get committed and get baptized. And I've heard guys that said, woo, if you get baptized, but if you fall back to sin, you will be lost forever. And uh, early church, when they heard the gospel, they got baptized immediately. Read it through the book of Acts constantly. Peter preaches to all the people on the day of Pentecost. What did they do? 5,000 get baptized the same day. Peter, I mean, Philip preaches to the eunuch. He said, while they saw a pool of water nearby, all of a sudden the guy was like, uh, whoa, uh, hey, what's in between getting baptized? Peter preaches to um, Cornelius at, in Acts 10. What did they do? As soon as they heard and they received the Holy Ghost, they received baptism of water. So when we get going to rabbit is that part of following Christ is denying yourself. That's why you get to be baptized. You get to die to the old man, let him drown, and you get to be resurrected a new man in Christ Jesus. So believing the gospel. So any of you guys who haven't been baptized, don't sit on the fence. Get baptized as soon as possible. A lot of the gospels, like Romans chapter 6, don't you know that when you're baptized, you're to baptize Jesus' death? What is that saying? That's assuming you've already been baptized. So you're not baptized. That scripture ain't written to you yet. It's meant to be written for those who are baptized. So get it. Um, so Galatians 2.20, what's he saying right here? It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives me. The life I now live, I live in the body. I live by faith in the Son of God. Who? How do he does that? Paul says, I get to, love, get to love by the love of God. How? I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul lived a life where he got beaten. He was in jail. He was thrown shipwrecked. He had a lot of stuff. He had to face problems, peoples, issues, other stuff. How did he do it? He did that because he believed, not just faith. I mean, faith is important. What are the greatest things? In the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where it talks about love, now abide these, faith, hope, and love. What's the greatest? Love. Faith is very important, but what is it? Oh. Faith. Yep. Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So, how does that happen? Galatians 5, 6. Mm -hmm. Okay. How much more time we got, Kumar? As I've been going for about maybe 35 minutes, 30, 25, 30 minutes. I don't want to take too long if he said 40 minutes was the max. Go on. This is limited for 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. We have completed 30 minutes now. Okay. Uh, 31 minutes. Over. 31 minutes? Yep. Just speak okay. For, uh, for five minutes more. <laughs> five minutes more? Yep. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. <laughs> We're going to Galatians 5. Verse 6. All right. 5. Okay. Galatians 5, 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither yeah. circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing is that contains that faith expressing itself through love. Was it? What come, is important? Come, close, come closer to your microphone. And, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, and... Uh, How's it? Is that better? Yeah, and speak louder, a little louder. <laughs> yes, Okay. Let's read that. I'm going to read that the NLT version. For when we are placed in our faith in Christ, there is no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is important? Faith expressing itself in love. That's right. Faith working through love. Man, like even today, how do I say like, man, it's been like now I've noticed there's been, not that I have to live by emotions, but Man, when you, when you get to get up in the morning saying, Father God, thank you, you're with me, that you get to live this day with me, that I can go love on others and uh, be with you. And whether you pray an hour, read your Bible for like two, spend two hours, or whether it's just 15 minutes, starting your day being in faith, 
and then getting to end your day in faith, being like, Father God, thank you for this day. I got to live this with you. Thank you, Lord, that you love me. You get to talk your heart out, maybe put your needs, your other stuff, pray for others that you're able to end on faith. What does it say? Um, Joshua chapter one, it says that meditate on this word day and night, that you may be successful in all your ways. But what are you meditating on? Just a bunch of words are meditating on who God is in you, what he's done through you, and the change of the new gospel is that no long, that mystery of the gospel. Was it Ephesians? Uh, Colossians talks about this a lot, is that that all men are welcomed into Christ, and that Christ in us, the hope of glory, that now we get to have the Holy Ghost dwelling within us. What does it say about God constantly? God is love. Yes, he has a lot of, it does talk a lot more about other stuff, about being holy, righteous, and other stuff, but God is love. Man, we were made to originally love. Like even the other day, I found out about a friend or Facebook friend's husband was murdered by some homeless people. It was terrible. And most people were crying for the woman, saying how sorry they were for her. And it is terrible. It's all right. What is it said? Weep with those who weep, rejoice with those who rejoice. So it's all right to cry when you've lost a loved one. And people were saying, we got to raise the dead. That's good. But when I first read that message and I started to cry because of those lost souls, because those people who've done those things, if they die, they're going to hell. So I was crying that, Lord, that they may repent and turn to you, O Lord. I did that for like five, ten minutes. It looked like I was out of my mind, like, what the heck? You're crying. Then all of a sudden, whoop, back to being just normal self, going about my normal day. Why? The love of God, because God is not willing any should perish, but all should come to the knowledge of his son. Today, without, um, let's see, he's like, tell a testimony about love of God compelling me. There was a, a woman who had been, what was it? She was going crazy, and uh, I drove, I was driving my car, and then this woman jumps in front of my car, and there's a group of kids there, and she's like, hey, you got to, um, help me. These kids stole stuff from me. Call 911. And so I was like, what? I was a little confused about to pulling out my phone. All of a sudden she starts banging on my window. Get out of the car. Um, you stole that from my niece. And I was like, whoa. So I sped off. And then I saw some of those group of kids who were like, had been filming her and mocking her, I think. And they're like, what's going on? She's like, oh, she's high on crystal meth. I parked my car and went back to that woman. She was being disorderly walking to people's yards like some people say get out of our yard so i come up to her and I go honey you're lost you don't know that jesus loves you and that you have a created value to follow him she's like don't talk to me about jesus i'm like hold on listen you don't know that he died for you to give you eternal life and that you're created for so much more than this brokenness of what you're doing i don't want to hear it she turns around and starts walking away. She's like 20 feet away from me. I reach out my hand and I say, in Jesus' name, I speak life. Holy Ghost, touch her. And all of a sudden, she turns around angry. Probably the devil's manifesting going, don't touch me. I'm like, dude, 20 feet away from you. Don't touch me. Kid praying. So she threw her pipe at me. And then she took her, at one point, she took her up. Uh, sweater and whipped me and it actually bruised me like she was cracked it on me like a like a whip but i looked at her and goes hey i'm not here to hurt you touch you i just want you to know god really loves you he cares for you that's what he died for to restore you to back to know the love of god to be a normal person and she kind of ran 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 chided and then she stopped being a public menace and went back into her into her apartment before, I wouldn't do something like that. Someone try to attack my car, other stuff, run away, get away from them. What did Jesus say? We can turn the other cheek. We can go the extra mile. Those are his teachings. But how do we do that? How do we do that stuff? Because one of the biggest things is getting over fear of, uh, what is it? Um, perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. We were reading that, I think, uh, 1 John verse 18. That perfect love is getting to spend that with Jesus. It's when we know that love, just like that woman. If we've been, if we only know, like, oh, I'm not a bad person. I've only been forgiven, not too much. We can only love a little bit.
but the more we can grow in that love, the more that we can connect with them on a deep level, the more it can naturally flow from us. Because oftentimes we're trying to do the Old Testament law, we're trying to love God and love our neighbor self and we're getting burned out. But when we get to not do it from just our own strength, but from just being in that communion, that relationship with him, what did you say? If you abide in me, I will abide in you. From apart from me, you can do nothing. He who remains in me bears much fruit. That's like, uh, I think John 15, forget where exactly anyone can post it on the, on the things. So anyway, I'm just telling you guys, remain in the love of God, know his love and that love, let that love flow from you as you have that time, that communion with him and his word. That's what I had to share, brother Kumar. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thanks for sharing the love of God uh, with all our people uh, through my uh, Facebook Live and uh, Zoom meeting, my friends, Sian. Uh, thanks for bringing the beautiful word. <laughs> and uh, in the last conclusion, I would like to mention two more words. But before that, I would like to ask some of our friends, uh, Diana Crossbay has joined with us in Zoom meeting. Hey, Diana, uh, can, can you uh, speak for a while here? Can you please unmute your microphone? Yes. Yeah, uh, would you like to speak uh, for a few of, uh, five minutes more? We have time. <laughs> I'm more interested in listening right now. Where I am, there's other people whom you might wake up if I keep talking. Oh. <laughs> so, this is uh, Brother Sian, uh, who is a best friend of mine since 2007. We have been uh, in touch with each other, praying for each other, praying for India, praying for the world, and uh, have brought the love of God today to the word of God. And thanks so much for joining with us. You're welcome. And uh, would you like to greet my people? Okay. Hello, all. Do you like to greet my people here through this Zoom meeting? Okay. Praise God. Thanks, Brother Sion, and uh, Especially, yes, our God is love. And um, uh, concerning uh, uh, with the things that happening in our latest uh, uh, updates and news through the television and the newspapers, I come to know that at any time, any nation needs God and God's love, which God is love. He's full of love. So I pray for the United States of America, especially for stopping the racial uh, inequality, because people have to love each other. As you said, love your neighbor. Jesus has, spoke, has spoken in the book of Luke 6, 35 to 36. Love your enemy. <laughs> not, not, on, not only love our neighbors, not only love to love ourselves, but he also taught us to love our enemy. And do good to them, lend them. Because our God is so good to them and do good them to them, even though they are unthankful, are evil. This is what a powerful word. So he expands his love towards even to the enemies. But today the people, unfortunately, they are not extending their love with the neighbor people, 
like pe nation means groups of people black people white people taller people short people women and men and uh, everybody if we go to intensive care unit there we can find islams christians hindus every religionic people we will find over there but they don't fight for the rights there they only fight for the life but jesus has given his life he died for us on the cross so that we can live in him the crucifixion of jesus is by the love of god god gave his begotten son to this entire world because god so loved the world so we urge all the people to love each one to spread the love of god to share the love of god to share the love of jesus with all the people and come in unity and come in the love of god as a fellowship as a congregation as a group as a one body members in the body of jesus christ so we have to spread the gospel to each and every nation because the gospel is the power of god the word of god is the love of god so people are needed of these things so we pray for america we pray for africa we pray for india we pray for all the continents and there is nothing is greater than the love of god hallelujah yes. hallelujah praise jesus would you like to pray and conclude this session my friend i give the benediction yeah yeah i can pray brother yeah anyway as i said forgot to mention that kumar is doing a lot of good mission work yep. so have supported some of his uh stuff before and uh if you want to help support the work since he's got a lot of trying to get an office taken care of and feed orphans and other things to help take care of that so as i say it's not begrudgingly but if it's on if you want to contribute or what you have not feeling compulsion to but um as i say god loves a cheerful giver so if you want to help contribute to his mission you can um i think it, you got more information on your facebook page that shows how you can contribute to kumar with that so whether a little or a lot or or even just in prayer so he'd appreciate that so anyway yeah i'll contribute with or finish this out with a prayer father god thank you that lord you are a righteous and holy god and said that we are to behold both your severity and the goodness of god lord and those who believe goodness but those who do not believe severity so lord but lord as i say as we come to get to know you more we realize that it's your love <laughs> cast out all fear because fear involves torment lord may we be perfected in love that lord may we not just realize that maybe not just realize that we're meant to be saved we're meant to be baptized we're meant to be doing good things but rather that we get to know you because when we get to know you we get to have this lord and because in the proof of having this connection with you forward flowing down is by how we love this is how people will really know that we are your disciples if we love one another but to truly love we got to know how you love how you love this lord how you lived how you died your love and sacrifice let our lives be proof of your love just as in the words of the songs by uh for king and country let our lives be the proof of your love thank you father god in your name we pray amen amen may the love of god our father and the grace of our dear lord savior jesus christ and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit shall be abiding with us now and forever amen amen <laughs> love you friend uh, thanks for sharing the love of god well, thank you for the invitation and for anyone who heard whether it be to say two or three are gathered or more he's in the midst of it so thank you father god amen yes please keep continue to pray for us while we are um looking unto god's will for having the land property and for constructing a 
house building and a church building, uh, as well as the office room. So we are, we have been in the ministry for full time since 18 years, uh, since the year of 2002, and have been uh, ministering in the rented houses in India, because in India it is uh, the biggest uh, Hindu populated nation. So Hindu people are not allowing us to run the worship services in their houses. All right, now we are in need, emergency need of a house li uh, building for living and uh, a house for running the worship services, like Sunday church services, something like that. So this is our emergency need. Uh, please keep on praying for us on that. Love you. Thanks for joining with us. And we hope to join often in the future. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care. Love you. Jesus. Uh,